li l-qakwa mal-programmi ħor ispirazzjoni u esperimenti u l-missidna tal-lumi jaħa wivati jajd Dron Adrien Saliba ija riċerka triċi, attriċi, muzicista, n-kollox, insomma, għani l-qakwa mal-don, don jja Maltija mill-Amerka u għank nitkelmu bl-Inglis u nidid l-konftid bil-Malti xitkune da tajt. Thank you for finding the time to come and talk to us and we can follow your career so far and we'll talk about all your artistry. Um, your life in New York as an artist, uh, this gets me curious, artist, lecturer, maybe you give us a picture of what is life as a, um, uh, an American Maltese person there, how is it, how does that look like? Well, New York City is such a haven for artists and for academics as well. We have such um, a diverse culture. It's multicultural. It's exciting. It's innovative. And there's so many opportunities for artists to just flourish and express themselves. So for me personally, um, you know, I studied theater my whole life. I have an MFA in musical theater writing from New York University. I studied at SUNY Purchase. My bachelor's is in drama. And my dream was always to be a playwright. And um, after my studies living in New York, I found such a beautiful community. And I was able to produce plays and direct and also be a solo performance artist and singer-songwriter. And um, I was really into spoken word and and slam poetry. And, you know, it, it was just such um, a nurturing incubator for us in the arts. Allora, um, donet is semmi li New York inet isa bennina all-artisti u um, u l-ricerkaturi fejn i personalment graduat fil-musical theater, writing fil-kidba u produċiet u tella txoli jittaħa kem waħeda kem film kem ma kollaborazzjoni ma joħrajn u kien post fejn ena ħafna. So, um, your interest in this is, I know how what a nice uh, feeling it is gives you. The hypogeum of Hal Saflini has yeah. brought you to our shores, has brought you to live here in Malta. Um, maybe you tell us all about that fascination that you have with the hypogeum. Sure. Um, I was finishing my PhD um, in early modern drama, where I was also focused on theater and looking at the representation of witchcraft in theater. And at the final stages, I decided to treat myself for my 40th birthday to finally get to Malta because Malta is the land of my father, my ancestors, and I had never seen it and it had always been a dream. So when I came here, of course, I went to the Hypogeum as a tourist. I had read about it. It looked fascinating. But when I was actually in the site itself and was standing outside of the main chamber, my heart just stopped and I gasped because to me it was like powerfully evident that it was a theater. I mean, you could see a platform, you could see entrances and exits where performers like ritual practitioners would, you know, go in and out of the room. You could see where audience members might have sat. And um, after the tour, I went to, you know, look it up you know, in the academic articles to see what was written about it. And um, I couldn't really see anything written about it as a performance space. Yes, as a ritual space, but not as a performance space. So then that became my goal. I had to move to Malta. I had to write about the Hypogeum as a prehistoric theater. Wow. Yeah, kienet it is semmi li fit tmim il PhD lewa l-wahda li kienet it atamel. Kienet shtaqet li ankat tati rigalli la nefisa u tijia u Malta u marret infatti li poġew. Uf, meta kienet et ħares li l-main chamber, il-kamra l-gbira, bdit immaġina li jja spazju teatrali fejn inti għandek l-atturi fuq pjattaforma, fejn jitħlu joħorġu, għapparti li jja umma ritwal il-performazzjoni, il-show li kunu għatjam uwa ritwal, imma u koll uwa mot teatrali, post teatrali. U għara li ħadet it-tur u għa faxina truħa fejn i marret istess, Indunat li fil-riċerka għat ma tiġi imsemmi jabħala post li seta kien teatrali. U għallura għamli ta' isa il-missjoni ta' ħabix ta' mel da' propju da' so you wanted to discover, to rediscover or to imagine this space as being a theatrical space. So how did you go about 
doing that? Well, it was a very long process. Um, <laughs> I applied for gr- it took me about seven years to finally be able to get to Malta. I applied for grants. I didn't get them. I applied for jobs. I didn't get them. But everything fell into place after um, Trump got elected and I decided to move out of America. (laughs) I just said, forget this, forget this country. I'm going to Malta. I'm pursuing my dream by hook or by crook um, of writing about the hypogeum. So I wrote a letter and um, a sample article to the archaeology department at the University of Malta. And um, I sent it to Professor Bonanno, who is very illustrious in the community here. And he supported my theory. And um, him with um, Professor Nick Vella invited me to pursue postgraduate studies at the university in archaeology. And then I ended up lecturing here. And it just all fell into place. So I was able to move. And um, with the university's blessing and in collaboration with Heritage Malta, I conducted a series of performance experiments of which you were a part of, as you know. (laughs) Very happily (laughs) involved. (laughs) It was amazing. It was amazing having you on our team. We had a team of really um, intelligent artists and academics that, um, you know, brought in their own expertise and um, gave me a lot of feedback into how the hypogeum could have been used performatively. We did, as you remember, we did sound experiments and movement exercises. We performed poetry. And we really looked at the different rooms and you know, how they could have functioned for a performer or for audience members. Cool. Allora, meta fi żmien li kien għadu kemm tala Trump iddeċidiet li għandha tieħu l-ħin tagħha biex timxi wara l-ħolma li tiġi hawnhekk u tkompli tistudja tara kemm seta' kien post teatrali li poġew bagħtet ukoll ittra parti minn artiklu li l-professor Bonanno u fl-Università ta' Malta u bis-support tiegħu u ta' Professor Nick Vella u kol l-Università ta' Malta ġiet biex tkompli l-post doctoral study hawnhekk fejn hi setet bis-support ta' Heritage Malta tagħmel ċertu eżerċizzji flimkien jiena kont fortunata waħda minnhom kien hemm ukoll riċerkaturi oħra fejn għamlet esperimenti ta' kif jinstama l-ħoss, ċertu kmama, ċertu poeżiji, jingħadu, kif tħossu kemmhekk bħala wieħed li qed performing qed jagħmel show kif tħossok so i i'm all i was always very fascinated how you took us in each chamber and how you asked us how it felt mm. and it was like a qualitative research at that point where you were asking us these questions to write them down and then you can deliberate on them because there was nothing written on that on that angle about the hypogeum how did you come up with all of this I mean, it was a mixture of looking at other ethnographic studies and utilizing my own intuition and my own logic. And I really tried to separate um, what we call edic versus emic um, reactions and experiences. Edic is objective. So for instance, if um, you know you can see someone on the platform through a window, that's something that would not have changed probably um, from the prehistoric times to now. But um, emic, how you felt, um, you know, what you imagined could have been there, that's very personal. And it's very um, controversial as to whether we can include these sort of um, feelings and intuitions in archaeological research. But in other disciplines, such as anthropology, um, you know, modern day insights are believed to have um, to have to possess the ability to shed insight on prehistoric experiences. I personally think it's in the middle. I think, yes, we can really see how we feel in a space, how, especially as a performer, how the architecture informs our movement and our like vocal projection. And I do believe that that sort of experimental archaeology can um, shed 
potential insights into past experiences. On the other hand, I also understand we're, you know, in the modern day, the 21st century. It's different. We're of different. course. We're not sacrificing animals <laughs> to like bring rain for the harvest, you know, so we, we do have a different mindset. So exactly. it's not 100% accurate our experiences but i do believe they're valuable to record ecco fi ricerca ta haish ta etara dak li huwa love you li inti per esempio tara il il tour min joti adik ma tanch sat et bidel min dak izmin so ta ti hu record ta dak ima wkoll shi shi hos il performer wat li iat yuza dan li spazio em ix ta et li anka ti hu ti hu xsip li tinnota dawn l-emozzjonijiet li kuna d-day. Issa fl-arkeologija għafna drabi l-emozzjoni ma tanċ titħol fija ma fl-antropologija d-dan u għam meħjus importanti. Ovvjament taħna bħala performers jekk wieħet immur id-dazmin mux sa jkunet joqtol bħala sagrifiċu l-ebda n-nimal imma għalbiċ iġibiċċita Allura hemm bidliet imma l-emozzjonijiet tagħna x'imkien fin-nofs bejn l-emozzjoni u dak li huwa loġiku quddiemek li qed tara qed jgħinna nieħdu stampa ta' affarijiet li finalment huma mitlufa. It's still we still need to use our imagination to try and figure out because ultimately it's just that space that's remained. In its bare roots, I, I, I should think. Yes, we don't have any writing from this prehistoric period. All we have are the spaces, you know, the other temples, which are also performative. And we have their wonderful iconography, their artistry, their statues, you know, their, their relics, their bones. Um, and those tell wonderful stories factually. You know, we can determine diet, we can determine illness, but things we can never determine our, you know, feelings and beliefs and religion. We can only interpret. And, you know, it is a bit contentious in the archaeology community. You know, can we use the powers of interpretation to, you know, make statements about the past? And that's a, a very understandable position because, you know, many people, for instance, will say there was a great goddess that was worshipped. Um, from the temple period, whereas others are more skeptical and they will say, well, we have no proof. And, you know, so it really depends on the individual where they fall in their epistemology. Um, you know, is it okay to look at the art and imagine the religion, imagine the ritual practices, or, you know, does that mislead us? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, I fall in the middle. Mm -hmm. I do think it is very important for us to use our interpretive faculties because otherwise we're not going to, you know, be able to say anything about the culture of the civilization. And we can't just look at facts. We do need to look at art and imagination and um, interpretation. We do need to use those modalities in order to bring this temple civilization into a more lived experience for the modern day people. Allura, Ia, ti kompliti insisti kem important li jinti tuza dak li huwa fattuali jekk qed tara statwa quddiemek u fdaliet nistgħu nimmaġinaw x'dita kienu jieklu, x'mart seta kellhom, imma l-emozzjonijiet tagħhom xorta tidħol fl-immaġinazzjoni, allura hija ta' x'imkien fin-nofs għal xin kella ma nkunux nistgħu nerġgħu nimmaġinaw il-ħajja li setet kienu qed jgħixu n-nies ta' dak iż-żmien. I wanted to um, try and see how to bring out all this in your um, passion for advocating for preservation of nature and the heritage that we are so blessed to have everywhere around us. You founded um, a collectivist Malta Arch where again you advocate for the same thing uh, against the destruction of archaeological sites and Malta's environment. I think you adopted us very well and you have us in your heart now <laughs> all the culture that's around us you really are passionate in trying to make everyone understand that we need to conserve it maybe you tell us all about the events you've come up with why you're so passionate about it what what would you like to see yes so much um so when i first moved to malta to start this hypogeum research and to start my studies with the university I read about the destruction of Tal Ares in Mosta in the times of Malta, and I was just 
utterly shocked that, you know, there was this ancient site dating to at least the Bronze Age, you know, that held a Roman building and held a kiln from Rome and um, Punic tombs even. And, and, you know, they were just destroying it. First, they were going to make a showroom, and I believe they um, created another supermarket right next to an existing supermarket, um, Little in Mosta. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, in fact, it is semi for Meta Jit Malta, yeah, in Donat, licking them down, licking at each drift al RS, faking them, uh, Daliet Mintalin as Morulurasas, mm-hmm. Minil Bronze, Fayanka Kinem, um, Fontal Tal Fuhar, Tadakis, Min Roman, Ansi, um, Oanka, Chertu, Obra, Ponici, Fain Dan Joe. كنو هايت كسرو يكنا تدا تعرف قول قد زيدا كنو هايت كسرو بشين تنبنا شي شو روم وشي سوبر ماركت يهور فين كنا عم ديجا سوبر ماركت what did that make you feel oh it, I was just so upset and sad and shocked and you know and I believed we could make a difference and um, so you were part of it we had a big um, protest outside of the rotunda where I brought your art and other you know people's art and mm-hmm. we performed poetry performed Marlene Saliba's beautiful poetry about the temple civilization and um, we worked really hard in fact I remember you specifically working really hard you know mm-hmm. giving the speeches about Tal Adas you know why we should save the site mm-hmm. and um, you know and I think that in of itself was a really um worthwhile endeavor to document the destruction even if we could not stop the destruction at least we're documenting it at least we're telling the story at least we're we're performing a sort of alchemy where we're turning something horrible into something beautiful something artistic um and you know we've done other events since then and I hope um, we can continue but more importantly I hope we can have more of an impact where we can actually start you know, protecting our archaeological sites. Exactly. Oh, I make the point fein. Um, I had that diverse artists to foster. Can I mean, um, fein. I think I wrote on that album. Most of them are protesta. Fein. Raina poesita. Mar Mariam Saliba. Marlene Saliba. Marlene Saliba. Um, to tell. Can I picture different? It artists different. To tell them not be jarna. Bishni spiegaw, anka jekk marnexin nixin waqfu l-mument li jahna ħadna punt artistiku u biddinna xħaġa kera xħaġa artistika dokumentajnija ħalli dak li kun ma jinsix li l-erda tal-kultura taħna ija xħaġa ta' min jistmerra u forsi xi darba daw l-avvenimenti ma jisaħu xi zjed fejna ħna nara u t-telfa ta' din daw l-postijiet storiċi li uma I, I, I admire the fact that from across the world you came here and you are finding, you are, you are seeing the value of what there is and trying to tell everyone. <laughs> no, no, this, I, I, I admire that a lot and I always told you this and I am very happy to be telling you here on air <laughs> that I, I appreciate that, that fact that, that you see the value in what we have. Um, through Malta Arch, you Volvo also combined your artistry and your educational uh, passion. Um, you've done uh, performances and events uh, for Science in the City, a yearly science event um, at the Bujibba Temple. Maybe you tell us how you go about doing something like that. What is the what is the thoughts about it? How do the audience react? What does that give you back? I mean, it's amazing. I, I did um, performances at Bujaba, not just through Science in the City, but also through University of the Third Age um, with very different populations. With Science in the City, we had, um, you know, maybe a lot of 20-year-olds or people my age and some children. And with University of the Third Age, we had the elderly community. But with both audiences, you know, their imaginations were so enwrapped um, with the performance, but also their minds were sparked with the actual archaeology of it. So, you know, at first I would take students 
um, students, audience members through the temple. And, you know, we would look at um, different things like, you know, where Torba floors were located or where, you know, there's there are holes drilled in um, blocks where animals could have been tethered. And, you know, these facts um, derived from the archaeological records, specifically Evans Grand Survey, um, you know, just again really brings um, the temple civilization back to life. And then when we bring in the imaginary, when we bring in the performance, um, you know, we hopefully can transport audience members to um, this other world, you know, this other like magical um, ritualized world that um, is a liminal experience. Victor Turner talks about the importance of liminality, which is sort of an in-between zone. So we're not really in our modern day mindset, we're not really in the prehistoric past, but we're in the middle. And bringing that, um, that imaginary, theatrical, ritualistic, magical world into the presence does something. Like Aristotle talks about how theater um, changes audience members um, through the acts of catharsis, through the acts of inspiring emotion into um, the audience, which is something you do amazingly, by the way, Angel. <laughs> and I have to shout out, Angel was a part of the Bujaba um, performance at um, with the Science in the City Festival. She um, did amazing live art, so she was drawing in the style of the temple civilization, um, the sort of, I think you made the bulls uh, that we have, like etchings of in, in plates. She actually, you know, did that on a, a large cloth that was like an animal skin. And um, she also taught um, our audience members, you know, how to make pottery using the sort of pinch pot method. And, you know, that sort of hands-on, um, exciting engagement, I feel is sort of missing in a lot of the lectures we have pertaining um, to archaeology here, which they're wonderful, don't get me wrong, but I feel that, you know, these sort of lectures are for people that are very academically oriented, and not everyone is, you know, especially children, they want to get their hands dirty, they want to play, and even older people, yeah. they want to imagine. Yes, and archaeology <laughs> becomes alive like that, because you're hands on doing things, and you're seeing the performer doing things, if it's not directly yourself, but it helps to create a more holistic picture. A hundred percent. So, um, Ia tak amlet avenimenti kem al, al Festival Science in the City kif semmejna kif u koll al Universita ta' Terzetta fejn l-udjenzi varjaw f- al festival kienu forsi izzar u al Terzetta kienu iktar gbar imma kolla kel setaw jitlu iktar f'dak il-post fejn mux ezzat il-moħ ta' persuna moderna u laqqas huwa f'tal-passat imma ximkin fin-nofs bej bl-immaġinazzjoni tista tara dak li forsi rajt dwaru, tallim dwaru jow fit-tur stess u rewk għax turi kanka xem fil-arkeologija forsi ċertu toqof fejkinu jorp tur l-annimali u ċertu rituali differenti iman bat isek isiru ta' veru fejn tara mini pinġi mini jamel il-fuħħar allura tibda tara l-istoria forsi dawnu ma metodi li jadom mumiex daqsek fil-lectures tal-arkeologija imma forsi u ma u tli għal dawk li mumiex daqsek akademiċi patfal u forsi jamka il-gbar Fejn inti għetti tijom stampa iktar kompluta, iktar, iktar viċin forsi tal realta ta' xkinet iseh. It gives them, I think, the audiences a, a better understanding of what might have happened. Yeah. The closest that we can go is through our imagination because there's no, as you said before, no writing. And it also um, is a lived experience that will stay in people's memories, Excellent. especially if they're children, you know, going through the temple, you know, seeing people dressed up in costumes reminiscent of that time and performing a, a ritual or a, a poem telling a myth that is you know, plausible, plausible from something of that era, or even derived from other ancient civilizations like Mesopotamia, um, that 
that just becomes part of our memories and our memories form our emotions. And when people have more of a visceral, emotional attachment to our ancient sites, they'll be less likely to destroy them, you know. Very, very good point. Um, I, I, I hover between Maltese and English sometimes. <laughs> um, il fatt li um, il nis ikun waddew min di l-esperienza, kif et-tejt speċalment anka fit-tfal, um, em ċans li dik il-memoria issir emozzjoni u bl-emozzjoni li tant jiftakru meta raw um, attur et pinġi et li bes il-kostumi u et jamel xaħġa li stajna nimmaġina u li forsi seħet, l-izzar tana u l-udjenzi tana ekollom aktar apprezzament li jisik arkeoloġiku u ma fejn u ma u ma jkisru ix. I am so happy that you adopted us as a country oh. for you to come and stay here and help us recognize the beauty that is Malta and its prehistoric history. And I would like also to thank you for um, all the efforts that you've done. Your next goal as a final <laughs> quick question. Not easy at all. <laughs> It's so hard. Well, I want to publish my work on the Hypogeum. I mean, that's I, I've written hundreds of pages. I, I've, I wrote the latest iteration is a 400 page treatise. Wow. <laughs> so I would like that published and disseminated. That's the next goal. Um, But I also, with you, hopefully, yeah. and Malta Arch, I really want to create workshops, not just focusing on Malta's archaeology, but also the dire necessity to protect our nature, our natural world, our trees, our green spaces. Um, the development that's happening at like this exponential rapid rate here in Malta is insane and we need to preserve our trees and our green spaces and we need to bring the next generation on board with that so that's my next goal for Malta Arch. That's a great goal I really want that for us for to us. happen. Thank you very much Don Adrian Saliba for joining us and thank you very much for joining us and for joining us and for joining us and for joining us.